Alright, so today I'm going to show you electro etching. Electro etching is the ability to cut shapes out of copper. Um, here's some random um, pieces I made, so some earrings. Necklace. There we go. It's a little bit better lighting. That one. Get some earrings in the back. So you can see the shapes are very unique, very random. For earrings, you have to be a little bit of an artist to trace out some rudimentary lines, but not that bad. So I wanted to show you some end products before I even get into the process. Okay, cool. Let's go take a look at how it works. Okay, so the first thing you do is get yourself some plate, not too thin. Um, this is 16th of an inch. You can ideally take a pipe, cut it down the center, and then smash it flat if you wanted to. That's an alternative method to get the plating. But yeah, this is about 16th of an inch. First mission scuff this all down so it's got to look like that not like this you're also going to need some tape and a tester model paint Ooh. and I found these brushes familiar with pin striping. They're long tapered brushes. If you don't trust yourself with a brush at first, you can use Sharpie to get the initial design and then paint over it. You can use pencil tool too, but it's uh, one of the fun things about this is you gotta kind of flow with it, be a little bit more random. Alright, so I'm going to scuff this up and I'm going to draw some stuff on it. Okay, so here's what I have so far. Just some rudimentary lines. Make plans for having holes in the corner. So you're going to drill one quarter, one, not one quarter, one eighth inch holes in all the corners. But I plan ahead in the design. So now what I'm going to do is paint these. The bigger parts right here, uh, later on those will have drill holes in them too. That's for, you know, the, the top of the earring. And right here, this will be for a kind of a dangly piece on the earrings. Alright. Alright, so if you are um, looking to clean your brush from tester modeling paint, you have to use lacquer thinner. Okay, so lacquer thinner. Um, here's some random just gooed out lines. I want to keep these pieces as natural as I possibly can. You know, in other words, like I, li I like flaws, I like mistakes, I like all the gooey mess of it all because in the end yeah it looks a little bit more chaotic that way so the bigger pieces again those are for drill holes I was painting um, loops at first and then I found out that was I don't know it didn't turn out as well so now what I have to do is make these connector pieces I'll show you how that works um, in the next little section here, so keep watching. Okay, so the red lines are connector lines. 
they basically hold the pieces into place as the copper gets eaten. All right, in the areas, the bigger areas, I'm going to paint a resist or, you know, like the, use the tester modeling paint in the bigger areas because one of the other things I've noticed is you don't want this process to take, you know, 100 years. So what will happen is if there's a lot of copper to eat, it takes forever. So I'm going to minimize that amount of copper by painting the larger areas just close to the design. I'll show you in the next part. So these, that part's just the, the web that holds everything together. Alright, so there we go. All nicely painted with uh, <laughs> big globs of paint in areas that I don't want the copper to get eaten away. Got some areas where I'm going to drill some holes. And the most important part is the blue lines. When it gets done etching, um, you'll find that the uh, the areas the outside of these lines, and I'll show you, are very unique looking, um, to say the least. Okay, so hours of letting it dry. Um, if you are going to be doing this outside the U.S. and you don't have tester modeling paint, any enamel paint will work. Ideally, you should probably look on the internet under electro etching. There is a hundred thousand videos on electro etching. Again, um, what I've what I've noticed about those videos is they use a lot of toner method. Um, so they use a toner transfer method from a basic laser uh, printer but I couldn't get it etched deep enough for what I really wanted to do with that I had to use enamel paint in order to get as thick as a sixteenth of an inch Sharpie marker will not work for a sixteenth of an inch cut with salt so if you're going to be adapting this method, that's fine. You know, I mean, I would totally ex say explore. You can make all kinds of cool shapes and things. Um, I wish I had. Oh yeah, I do. <laughs> so, using the toner method, you can etch cool patterns into things with the same chemicals I'm going to be using the salt. of a hybrid this one's so you can cut these circles out and make earrings out of them in fact I got a pair of those and then patina it down and just rub it out So again, there's a million things you can do with the technology and to mix media, electroforming and etching together is pretty sweet. So that's what I'm doing here in this video. This is just straight up etching, but I want to marry the two. Alright, so I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, while that thing's drying, I have to prep my tank and I wanted to show you this. So this is what happens if you leave this out <laughs> so when you are done with it please make sure that you clean this this is a jar it used to be it is a jar somewhere under here and it's encased in salt another thing you should be wary of is do not do this near anything like your tools anything steel that you love because it will rust everything within probably about a three foot radius around this thing. Okay, so the, the very air becomes a breeding ground for rust. How do you clean this? Well, um, you dump the liquid into kitty litter and the salt you can just get rid of with hot water. All right, wish me luck. 
<laughs> so cool. All right, while my water boils for the salt, uh, I'll show you this. This is what it looks like cleaned up. So a scrap piece of copper, clips that you don't care about, scrap piece of clock. copper does not have to be anything special, just anything, but it does have to be copper. Um, basically a little something to go like that to hold the piece into place if you have a smaller piece or I'm going to clip it off the side so when I cut pieces I, I cut them to fit this jar again you can use any jar or glass um, I would probably stay away from plastic only because it's hard to clean okay so salt water added how do you make salt water boil water add salt that's it so here's a three pound box for a two liter <clears throat> I roughly used half this box okay you'll know when you have enough salt in the water because when you go to turn off the pan it'll actually uh, crust on the top that's when you know you have enough salt so keep adding salt and when you think you have enough salt add more make sure the water is boiling now before I add the part in here I'll let this cool down because I don't want it to affect the paint or the tape so I'm gonna let this cool for probably a good two hours before I even start using it okay so where my salt water is cooling I'm going to Kind of form this so on the back of this I have a piece of tape and it has to be just the standard everyday packing tape after you put the packing tape on then drill the holes okay that way it seals it up nice and neat you can have if you don't have the tape you can double over the tape like in other words I have two pieces of tape here to span the width of this piece of copper okay these so if my metal is a sixteenth of an inch you'll see that these are double the thickness of my metal that's very important because if you do not have that it will eat these too and it will eat through these and then your piece falls in and you have to go fish it out which is no big deal but just make sure that what's holding it in the tank is double the thickness of the piece of metal. I have this clean jar that I use and I'll set up a kind of a dummy system here where I'll put this to the side and then I'll bend, put it halfway down and then bend these over so that the hooks are all ready to drop into the dirty tank. All right, so it should look something like that. Nicely laid out. Very secure. So it's ready to drop into the salt water and add electricity to it. All right, so here we go. We have my negative lead that hooks up on here. And my positive lead, which hooks up to one of these. And you know you have it when you'll see bubbles. And I'm pretty sure I shut my power supply off, so I gotta go turn that on. And that is all the way around the corner. <laughs> And right now I have it at 5 volt and 1.26 amp. So this is kind of like my clean area. I keep the power supply there and then it drapes and then it goes out through that hole. And then on the other side of this wall is actually where all my chemicals are. Again, salt, 
in electronics, not a good idea. But there you go. You can see. Okay, so if you, if you have it right, the bubbles will show up on this side. So again, negative, positive, negative, positive. So cool, it looks like Alka Seltzer. This takes, I will warn you, all day. You can come back and check it every two seconds because I know you will, because I know I did when I first did it. But seriously, it will take probably about six hours, six to eight hours. All right, so come back, look at what it looks like. All right, so every two hours or so, you come over to it, you'll see how disgusting it looks, and you go, ooh. Um, you might not see bubbles like this. So in a smaller tank, which I noticed the smaller the tank, the faster it goes. Okay, if you go to make a huge tank and go, man, I'm gonna salt water etch everything. Um, the larger tank did take a long time. This doesn't take nearly as much. Okay, but with a smaller tank, you have to do this. Remove this clip, remove all clips, and every two hours or so, take this out and just kind of go like that. That's why I like this shape. It's a little easy to clean off. And you'll see some goo float to the surface, and then you put all your clips back, and then you hook your leads all back up, and then continue. So there gets such a buildup on those clips that eventually it becomes slow. Just every once in a while, come over two hours or so, check it, no bubbles, shake it up, clean it off. Okay, after eight hours of being in the bath and changing the water once, so I did have to change the water. Um, here we go. Got them all cut out. If I hold this up to the light, voila, I have parts that I did not have to cut out using a saw. So if you've ever had the privilege of using a saw on copper, eh, yeah, that's a, that's a skill that, I don't know. But other than that, pretty cool workflow. Now what I'll do is I'll take the tape off, dip it in acetone, and I'll heat the parts up uh, red hot and then pickle them and that will remove any residual paint on them and then after that I just start with the process of gluing and you've seen those videos where I glue crystals to things using super glue and baking soda so there's nothing really new other than uh, the process I just showed you on how to cut copper using salt. So I hope you enjoy the workflow and may you use it in very cool ways. Enjoy! So I did want to show you my uh, texturing phase. So um, this is basically TIG welding and what I wanted to do was Take and use these sharp pieces in the form itself without making them so sharp. So I'll show you how I did that.
Cool, and that's how you TIG weld with one hand. Okay. So it makes these, makes these little like solder balls at the end. Okay. And when you TIG weld or when you electroform over those, boy, they have some really cool texture, let me tell you. So what I'll do is I'll trim some of this and then I'll hammer a little bit for more texture. And get these a little bit more flat in this area so I can drill them. Same with these. So I'll kind of use these two for an example. You can use solder for this method too. All right, so here's the final outcome. Unfortunately, in the video, uh, somewhere along the way of pickling it, I lost this guy's twin. So I have no idea I cannot find it anywhere. But that one turned out really good. After I added some texture to it. See, just a little drill hole in there. Love this little swoop here. So you will have flaws with this method, I will warn you, you know what I mean? Uh, unless you make really big turns, like this stuff works really good. But when you start getting into the thinner stuff, that's when you have to worry. So if you're, if you're a perfectionist, I would try to let that go with this workflow. But other than that, very cool. I'll find you. Yeah. So I hope you enjoyed. Have a good one.